This Italian design dream is a 1972 Ferrari 365 GTB4, also known as the Daytona. It is two-seat Grand Tourer produced by Ferrari from 1968 to 1973. It was introduced at the Paris Auto Show in 1968. It is lightning quick with a 4.4 liter Colombo quad cam V12, which produces 352 horsepower and enables a top speed of 174 miles per hour. We at Typewriter Minutes have been wondering, have we recently seen any other lightning quick, lightweight, Italian designed, modern looking, and silver machines produced in 1972? Hi, this is Ailey from Typewriter Minutes. Today we're going to be doing a review on the Olivetti Lettera 31. Picked this machine up at a garage sale with two other machines. All three were in good shape. This one especially was pretty clean on the outside and the inside. It's mechanically very similar to a Lettera 32 near like a till. The only difference on the inside is that the, or on the mechanics, is that there's no tabulator. So there's no red key right here. For tabulation and then there's no lever right there for setting and clearing tabs so that's the the main difference mechanically also it's got a, a plastic shell all the way around this one is in excellent shape you can see it was made in Barcelona Spain and you would think that the with the plastic shell it would feel cheap and flimsy but actually it's just a really solid typer the, just like on the 32, the chiclet keys really work well for me. The keys just have a, the type bars have a momentum when you type that just makes it really snappy. So I'm gonna show you a couple of the features. The, the plastic ribbon cover just pops right off. Probably should do that with two hands. It's got two posts, one there, one there. And those posts go into these little rubber grommets on each side. These are still nice and soft. And you'll notice two screws here. There's one there, one there, and then in the back, there's two more screws there and on the other side. And you pop those four screws out and the body comes right off. So it's easy to get the, the shell off for cleaning and maintenance. Something to be careful about though is that can't really see it but on top of the rubber grommet there's a thin little washer you got to be careful because when you take the body off if you flip it over the little washer can fall off and get lost and something else to be careful of is that on the underside there's a little metal cone that goes up through the washer that way and one of those fell out it took me a minute to figure out what it was but that um, can get lost if you're not careful so it's a it's kind of amazing what they fit into a small package here. It's a basket shift, super nice light touch on the basket shift. The uh, spools are not standard. They have a little bit larger diameter hole there so that this nut can tighten down on the spool. And it does have a ribbon reverse system. You can see the fork right there. There's a fork on each side, and the ribbon uh, goes around this little post here. And one thing I've noticed is that the, the eyelets that I normally use for Brothers and Smith Coronas is too large because it, it'll come around this post, trigger the fork, but then on the way back, I, that eyelet does not want to get through. Let's see if I can focus here. This little gauntlet, the, this post and this little stud here, the eyelet keeps getting hung up, so I'm gonna to have to find smaller eyelets. A friend suggested bending the eyelet a little bit. Uh, we might try that too, or tie a knot in the ribbon, but I'm gonna see if I can find some smaller eyelets. You'll notice right here is the carriage lock. When you're ready to put the machine away, just flip that switch, and it's locked for transport. And when you're ready to type, just lift it back up. It's got a paper bale with a metal paper bale rollers so you don't ever have to worry about those getting hard. 
uh, the benefit of this machine is that this rubber platen and the feed rollers and the grommets all feel like brand new. They're nice, soft, and squishy. Um, here's the paper release lever. It's for getting paper in and out or scooching it to get it straight. Uh, one carriage release lever on the right side. There's not one on the left side. And then it's got little push and slide margin indicators. Really simple, reliable. One thing I did have to fix when I got it was the bell did not work. And it was, uh, the clapper just had a bunch of sticky old grease on it. I cleared that up with some lacquer thinner. This little triangular piece there is the end of the clapper. And so when the right margin goes by, that's what triggers the bell. When we got it, when you return the carriage on the return trip, it pushes that little clapper end or the other end of the clapper out of the way. And I noticed that it was pushing on the plastic shell. You see there's a little plastic cutout right there. There's more room on the metal bodied 32. And every time I returned the carriage, that little thing would click against the body. So I had to reform the end of that arm so that it's working just fine right now. So I pass the camera back off to Ailey. We'll come around to this side here. It's got uh, the return handle when you're ready to put it in the case that just flips over that way. And I've noticed there's a teeny little paint chip right there and that's exactly where this thing hits. So when you're ready to put it away, just be careful. You can go around, it tilts a little bit, so just be careful not to chip the paint on that guy. And that's how you put it in for storage. And then when you're ready to use it, it just comes right back up. If you'll come in right here, zoom in a little bit, and you'll see that's the line space lever. It's got single space, double, triple, and then zero, if you flip it all the way to zero, you get the freewheeling, so you can need to type out a form and get it exactly on the line. That's what that's for. And then put it back on your line spacing with the clicks when you're done. So that's about it as far as the features. Um, oh, over here it is bichrome ribbon. So you got black, red, and then stencil in the middle. It's got a thin little space bar, which I thought would bother me for typing, but actually works pretty well. I read online a lot of people don't care for the thin space bar on the 32, but I guess it's just personal preference. I haven't had any problems with it. One thing on the bottom, again, we were fortunate that the, the rubber grommets all around were nice and soft, because if you come down here, the, this bottom plate is made out of metal and it, there's a, it just hinges on and to get this thing off you have to pry the metal plate off these rubber grommets and it was a breeze for this machine because these are nice and soft and it just pops right off and the rubber grommet goes through this little metal outer piece. Dwayne Jensen has a video on Phoenix typewriter on a letter of 32 where those grommets were rock hard and it's really hard to get this plate off. You have to um, really pry hard if the grommets are hardened. So again, we were lucky that this machine, the rubber all around feels like brand new and the feet are still nice and soft. So I don't know where they kept this machine, but they did a good job taking care of it because it looks just like it came straight out of the factory. So I think we've covered all the features. We'll do one more tour here. And then we'll come back for a type test. We forgot to mention that there's no paper support. Yeah, on the letter 32, there's a little flip up paper support. So that's the other difference mechanically we've noticed between the 32 and the 31. So as you type, the paper can flop over on the back. So, one little drawback. And now for the type test. Before we do that, two quick things. The carriage end caps 
are metal, even though the, the shell's plastic. These black end caps on each side are metal. Okay, and when uh, you put the ribbon cover back in, it's got two little hinges right there that just go into these notches and then push down and you're good to go. All right, I always use two pieces of paper even though this platen is nice and soft. I could probably get away with using one, but just as a habit, I always use two. Carriage lock is on, pull it off. Okay, so we'll do a couple lines on the black setting. I've noticed the keys are a little closer together than say on a Hermes 3000. So if you have big mutant fingers, you may not like the size of the, of the keyboard, but for me, um, I don't know, it feels just right. It's got a nice snappy feel to it. There's the line lock, so margin release. Oops. Okay, now we'll do red. Face is nice and crisp. A little bit of uh, every now and then, a little bit of black on the red setting. I'll have to see if I can tweak that a bit. But really nice typing feel, nice and snappy. And again, I really like the feel of these chiclet keys. And again, you're you might have a you might have a different experience, but for me, the space bar, even though it's thin, doesn't bother me at all. So I'd say it's a, a nine, uh, maybe out of a ten. Nine out of ten as far as typing feel. One final thing to note: some typewriters have a mushy backspace. One thing I like about this machine is that it's got a nice feeling backspace. No. No mush to it at all. And now let's take a look at the case. So the case is in good shape. It's got a few, no, that's just dirt. Uh, a few little scuffs here and there, but it's a, I don't know, plastic vinyl case. I think that might be white out. I've cleaned this, but I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning on it. The handle's in good shape. This just pulls out like so, so the handle goes between there and opens up like that. You can see case and, oh, focus there, case and typewriter made in Olivetti plant, Barcelona, Spain. So I kind of like the look, the blue case with the gray interior and the machine just sits down Lock on. Sits in the deep side of the case, unlike most typewriter cases. Like so. Close it up. And it's a pretty lightweight package when you consider that the machine's got a plastic shell. The case is kind of lightweight. Um, a few scuffs here and there, but overall, the case and the machine are in really good shape.
And we forgot that there is two little rips on each side. Right there. But overall, still holding up. And to finish up this review, some pros and cons. Before we do the pros, I did look up the serial number. I forgot to look at the serial number when we had the body off. And the body, it's right under the body panel here, so we had to take that off to get the serial number. But this one was made in 1972. Okay, Ailey, what are the pros? The pros are excellent typing feel, light basket shift, there's a really cool modern design to it, there's soft rubber platen and grommets, lightweight, a really cool blue case, and fairly easy to get apart for cleaning and maintenance. Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the body panel comes off with just four screws. And then getting the platen out is not that bad. You take the end caps off. There's a little platen retainer bar that flips up. And then the left side, it's got a uh, just a threaded platen knob. Turn it left, it comes out. One thing I did notice that there are some parts when you take the platen out, uh, some outside parts that can come off while you're cleaning it. So I had a little zip tie through the hole once I had the platen out. But anyway, it's overall fairly easy to get apart for cleaning and maintenance as long as the grommets on the bottom are soft. So you can get that bottom plate off easy, which on this one it was easy to get off. Um, if you have hard rubber grommets, different story. The cons that we could think of, uh, the smallish space bar, doesn't bother me. Apparently bothers some people based on the reviews that we've seen online of the 32. It's got uh, no tabulator, no pop-up or uh, paper support, no pop-up or slide-up paper support on the back. So as you're typing, paper kind of flops over the back once you get towards the second half of the page. And a few slight tears in the case. Overall though, we really like this little machine. Glad that we picked it up at the garage sale. Thanks for joining us in Typewriter Minutes. Make sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.